Hi guys, blessings and peace. I am here on Shine and Out Factor. Okay, whatever you're doing for Christ, my prayers, you're doing it today. Guys, I was scheduled to do a Zoom. I um I actually planned on going through Zoom for this meeting for the book giveaway. So I pray and I hope those of you who uh was interested, um those of you who said you were going to log on, you know who you are, okay? I am here. The time is now 8.08. .08. I'm eight minutes behind because I had a little uh, difficulties, technical difficulties. But however, I'm here anyway. So once you come on, okay, tell Shine hello, okay? And I will greet you as well. Okay, now I have uh, more than one setting, uh, my cell phone, which I had to really hop on real quick to let you know that I am here, and I have my uh, laptop, I have two laptops uh, running. The thing is, is my uh, web camera on my laptop is... Uh, not uh, working as though it should, okay? But however, I hopped on my other computer where my Zoom was um, much more familiar with the web camera that's built inside. So, However, I am on Zoom, so if you want to hop on Zoom, uh, I'm here. I'm here. Um, I see one eye, okay, whoever you are. If you're interested uh, on tonight in the book giveaway, let me know. Let me know who you are, and we want to move forward. I wanted to uh, just be a blessing, guys. I, I, God is so good, okay, and he allowed me to shine you know, through it all. Jump on Zoom. Now, if you jump on Zoom, I'm going to uh, greet you as well. But I want to share Zoom um, on Facebook. And that's what I'm trying to do at this moment. Okay, guys? So, bear with me. Okay? Because I really want to uh, share it as well on Facebook. So I'm here, guys, and I'm uh, welcoming all of you that is interested tonight in the um, book giveaway. Okay. So again, if you're there, let me know who you are and we'll continue. But in the meantime, I am trying to uh, go live on Facebook. Okay. I'm not going to give any type of pleasure to the, um, you know, the, uh, the difficulties, but I'm going to go forth anyway. I won't be long. I will probably end around about, uh, 9 15. Okay. So if you're there, once again, let me know who you are. And I will greet you.
Okay. I'm waiting for some of you to log on. And in the same token, I'm trying to log on to my Shine page. Okay? So again, guys, if you're there, let me know. Okay? Because I am here. I am here. Okay, now I see that I am live on my Facebook. Okay. I have a slow connection on my phone, so I'm going to discontinue on my phone once I get it all set up. And I appreciate you guys for bearing with me. Okay. Yeah. I'm trying to get it all right, guys. I really am. <laughs> Once again, if you're here on Shining Out Factor, let me know. Okay, guys, I'm going to continue this way, and hopefully you can see me. I got all different type of uh, areas that I'm trying to record. But guys, I do want to say welcome again. I'm going to go ahead and go forward. Uh, I'm just going to make sure that I am um, you know, looking in both directions. So if you see me here, I'm on my phone, okay? And hopefully you could see me in the same direction, okay? So guys... This is Shine's uh, first book giveaway. And again, like I said, God's been good to me. God's been having me in transition. Um, he's He's been dealing with me about uh, worship as well. And guys, I really hope that you look on uh, my page and you get that message. I'll be back with uh, worship. Part three, session two. Um, session one I did on the other day. But I don't want to prolong the time, guys. I, I, I wanted to talk to you about that worship because this was one way that I wanted to worship God through the obedience of giving. Okay? Through the obedience of giving. So there's one passage of scripture where he says, If you give, it shall be given back unto you. Press down, shaken together, running over. Men shall give unto your bosom. And so that's what I want to do. I want to be a blessing to you, whoever is uh, interested 
and uh, getting any of the books that I wrote. Now, the books that I wrote, I started writing. Let me just tell this little testimony as I kind of wait for someone to uh, log on. Um, the first book that I actually wrote, which was uh, Inspired Poems for the Soul. Now, this is a revised copy of Inspired Poems for the Soul. But I wrote it back in 2012, and it was just something that's on my heart, you know, just to write, okay? It came from one poem, okay, uh, that I wrote back in uh, 20, uh, 20, not 20, but 1997. I wrote a poem in 1997, and so when I wrote that poem in 1997, and 2012 came back up again. Okay. Um, what happened was. Uh, the what Lord, happened was. Mm -mm, no, no, no. Uh, the Lord spoke to me. Okay. And uh, he asked me what I was going to do with my writing. Okay. I'm just trying to give you a little uh, testimony on how I start writing. In the first place. Okay. But he asked me. He said. What are you going to do with your writings? Okay. Um, so as as I went from the poem from 1997 up into 2012. From that one poem I wrote poetry. And that's how I came up with life inspired poems for the soul. So I'm just going to give um, you a highlight on what this book is about. The book is about. Um. And, and, and I'm just going to start here. Words from the author. Okay. Now, this is what I believe. I believe the book of Inspired for the po Inspired Points for the Soul will inspire you to move beyond your capacity. Now, what do I mean by that? Moving beyond your capacity, pushing yourself and striving and thriving for something that you have never pushed for before. Okay. Doing something that you never did to get. A different result. And a lot of times, and I've done this myself, I ask for this and I ask for that. And in, in all uh, reality, I believe God was telling me, listen, I'm waiting on you. How many of you can say that, at you know, the, in, in the same token, that God is waiting on you to move? Now, when you move, he'll move. So, and again, that's beyond your capacity. We're, we're basically being inspired to move in areas that we really don't know how, but God give us the strength and the ability to do so. And also after you've experienced the life of these words and inspired points for the soul, I believe and I trust because these words came from my heavenly father. You will have the sense of creativity. Okay. You have the ability and you will have influence. Now what's, it's a waste of time. I trust and I believe it's the it's a waste of time to uh do a thing and you're not changing any you, you're not changing and then you're not changing anyone else. You you don't have the influence to, you know, uh and, and the power and such within yourself to uh change someone else. Now, literally God changes us all, but being an influence Okay, in some way, in somebody's life and having an impact is very important. Okay, so every dream, guys, and every desire and every passion that you were created with will come alive. Now, I trust and believe that all things work together for the good of those who love God. And that was called to his purpose. Now, we all got a plan of our own. You know, we all have, you know, a plan in, in a sense. And sometimes those plans don't even happen. But God has a plan that will never change. And he's He's considering you and I in that change. Okay? So, it, it, will, it will come alive. I think about a passage of scripture. And I hope and I pray that some of you are uh, joining, uh, Shine, that you're watching. And again, you let me know. What book you like. Now, you can choose from Inspired Poems for the Soul. You can choose from um, You can choose from Redemption. And I'll let you know what that book is about. 
You can choose from tap, uh, tap into your core. You can choose from father or you can choose from take another shot. So as I end uh, letting you know about Inspired Poems for the Soul, I lastly let you know that, hey, your dreams, your desires, and every passion that you were created will come alive if you believe it. And if you strive, you know, for, to, you know, to make a difference in your own life and somebody else's life. So as you read this book, you know, keep in mind that whatever you want to do, to be, you can. It's, it's all about being inspired. And listen, guys, I have some time and what I want to do is share uh, one poem, okay, and actually it is the first poem, and it's entitled Dream, okay? Now, this book, I would say, are for people who want to be inspired to, again, to move beyond their capacity, doing things that you know that you can't do, but God gives you the strength and the virtue to do so. Also, if you want a sense of creativity, if you want strong ability and desire and influence, not only in your own life, but in somebody's life where you have an impact for the sake of the kingdom of God. Remember, this is shining that factor. And I always say, whatever you do for Christ, you know, do it today. So that's your contribution, your gifts and your talents to give back to God on what he has given unto you. This this is uh, what this book uh, will do for you, those who are interested in the poetry book. If if you want to dream, if you have dreams, if you have those desires again, and you have a passion to create. Now, we a lot of times we can say what we want, but we don't always go and do what it takes to, you know, to get what we want. But reading these these uh these inspirational poems will allow you to do just that. Everything you do will come alive. Uh, one passage of scripture, which is one of my favorites, Psalms, um, the first ch uh, chapter one of Psalms and verse three, it talks about, um, you know, being the tree planted by the rivers of waters and bringing forth fruit in every season. I say every season, you know, because God is always up to something. And if you're connected with him, you will always be up to something. Okay. But yes, it'll all come alive. And then lastly, as you uh, read the book uh, of Inspired Poems for the Soul, whoever's popping in on me, um, remember, go ahead and let me know who you are, okay? And let me know your choice of, of my writings, you know, that you want. Right now, I was just explaining... Um, what life inspired poems for the soul is all about. Okay. So be inspired. So let me move on because the time is now 826, guys. I, I said I wanted to be ready uh to get off line uh right about 915, considering that I had difficulties with my Zoom uh, and I had to move to my phone. I had to move to another uh, laptop. Okay, but the next book that I wrote, okay, this was uh, written, and it's called Redemption. This book was written, uh, let me see, in, hmm, this book was written, let me see, I wrote uh, Inspired Points for the Soul in 2012. I believe this was 2019, if I'm not mistaken. If I'm not mistaken. And so what redemption is all about, I, I give a testimony on how the enemy tried to come in my life to kill, steal, and destroy. That was a situation at the time of my life that I went through. And it seems like he had the upper hand. But how many of you know, if it had not been for God on your side, you don't know where you'll be. And I can say the same. If it had not been for God on my side... I don't know where I'll be. So, in the process, come on somebody, of me going through that, after the fact, God brought it back to my remembrance and said, share it. 
A lot of times we go through things, we don't want to share it. But how many of you know that could save somebody else's life outside of your own? Okay, so with redemption, I'll read you the whole uh, purpose of redemption. Okay, and that is, let me, let me go inside real quick and see. Okay, so yeah, I'll read you the dedication of redemption. All right, and redemption, this is who I dedicate this book to. To, first of all, my God, my Lord, and my Savior, Jesus Christ, for redeeming me, okay, from the hand of the enemy, okay? I also dedicated to my mom, co-pastor uh, Doris Brundish, for all the encouragement she gave me to continue in the faith. Now, that's important. There is somebody out there who set an example for you in order, you know, to stay on the right path or however you want to say it. But I also um, wanted to dedicate to my mentor, and that was Dr. Mary P. Johnson for teaching me to endure this race. So this is a race, uh, a spiritual battle is, is what we're all fighting, guys. And what I want to say about redemption is, I was fighting a spiritual battle at the time, okay? Because I don't want to continue to read all the way to the end because I see some some writings there back in that time that doesn't really exist as of right now. So I won't go further. But what I will do, I'll move down to the purpose once again. But a lot of us, we are fighting battles that uh, not knowing that it comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And this book, Redemption, kind of explains that. Um, how the enemy came in my life and, and again tried to kill, steal, and destroy. So let me just go ahead and read the purpose. So why I choose to write this book. Here it is. This might be your choice outside of uh, life and life inspired points for the soul or redemption. Okay, this might be your choice. Okay, let me know if you're logging on. Let me know who you are so I can ensure that you get your your free book. Okay, so why I chose to write redemption, my purpose of writing this book is to first prove this is good to Satan that he has lost this battle. Now, remember, I told you that redemption was about a spiritual battle. And I did mention as well that a lot of us out there, we are fighting battles. Some of us, we don't even know we're in the battle. Come on. Some of us, we don't we don't even know that we're in the battle, but. Be assured that if you're still standing, that God allow you to win. God allow you the victory. Okay? I also wrote redemption because I want to let every woman and man know that whatever life brings, it could be trials, it could be temptation, or troubles. Nothing is too hard for God to solve. Okay? You've been fighting these battles for a long time, but God is saying, give it to me. Okay, he said, give it to me. And also, the purpose of me writing redemption was, I want to let the weak say, I'm strong in God. Come on, because how many of you know, if you're never weak, God could never show you or give you strength. There's a time in your life that you have to be weak and such, so you can count on God for the strength. But I want to let the weak say, I'm strong in God, and never forget that you have an adversary who roars. And seek to devour. What do that mean? Every day, God has a plan for us. Every day, Satan have a plan for us. Now, some of us out there might be thinking, Chandra, what are you talking about, Shine? What are you talking about, Satan? The devil. Because we, there's a passage of scripture where it says we're not wrestling against flesh and blood. But we wrestling against the principalities and wickedness in high places. This world that we're living in, and I often say this on Shining Out Factor, this is a spiritual world full of principalities, full of evil, full of wickedness. And some of us don't even know. We can't see it because we don't have a spiritual eye. But you have to understand and know that the enemy is out there to... Kill, steal, and destroy. 
Okay? And he's seeking whom, who's, whoever he finds weak. You can read uh, 1 Peter 5 and 18 talking about being sober. So, because the enemy is, is trying to kill, steal, and destroy... Because he came to do so, and also he's seeking who he may devour, based upon uh, Peter, First Peter, uh, five and eight. We have to remain sober minded, okay? Sober minded, being uh, vigilant, and staying faithful to our Creator, okay? Also, many people do not realize they're bound. Come on, I was bound in this season of my life when I wrote this book. You know, uh, a little bit after, so to speak. And God allowed me to become free. Okay? But again, a lot of us out there, we don't even know we stuck. We don't even know we stagnant. Come on, somebody. But I believe this book will give you some type of insight on how to, you know, to remain uh, alive in the spirit. To remain uh, you know, faithful to God to remain in a place where God puts you in, not becoming stagnant and such. Okay. So they operate out of their flesh. Now, this is people that might be in battles that don't they don't know of, and they also uh don't know that they're bound because while they're operating out of flesh, okay, while the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy once again. So I wanted those who want to be free. Now, if you don't want to be free, if you want to continue to be stagnant, if, if you don't have a destination where you're thriving for, this might not be for you. But I'm talking to the people that literally knows that you need a change. I'm talking to the people that literally knows that, that there is something greater for you. And all God is saying, you, all you have to do is reach up and grab it. That's it. But I shared on uh, the other day about uh, having an example, having influence in your life. Those of you could kind of keep you, um, you know, held accountable and such. So I talked about the major and the minor prophets. I won't go into that, but I'm just giving that as an example, um, you know, of wanting to be free, basically. And you need an example. And why am I saying that? This, this book is an example on how you can not only get free, but remain free. Okay? So again, I repeat that. I want those uh, to know how to be free and choose to stay free and to understand the work of the enemy. Oh, my God. A lot of us, we don't have a spiritual mindset. And if you don't have a spiritual mindset, you 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 will not know spiritual things. You you know, God gives us an eye, those who are spiritual. God gives us an eye on you know what is in the spirit realm. Okay, I'm gonna leave that there. And I'm gonna share John 10 and 10. Okay, that's in the book. Uh 2 Corinthians 2 and 11. That's in the book. Okay, and I really pray and I hope heaven smile upon you if this is your choice, okay, as you read it, just as Numbers, the sixth chapter and 25th verse talks about, okay, so this is my testimony once again of being bound, becoming free, and staying free, okay, there's a passage, uh, a scriptures on being redeemed, I won't share, but it's in the book, okay, Revelations 12 and 11, it talks about they triumph over him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. Also, lastly, Psalms 107 and 2, let the redeemer of the Lord say so, okay, whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. So if you're not free, you can't say nothing. It's, it's, it's sort of like a muzzled mouth, okay? I'm going to move on to the third book. That's five, that's three, that's uh, tap into your core, okay? Tap into your core. Now, the way that this book uh, came about, it came about through the gathering of my sisters in Christ, okay? My God sisters in Christ. We would gather here at my house. We would pray, okay? We would allow God to move by his spirit, and, you know, 
bring forth deliverance. Okay. And I give a shout out to my sis, uh, Rochelle Williams. We were talking one day. Okay. And she began to minister to me and she said, you know what? What you're doing here, this is not all. Okay. God want to do something with tapping to your core. Okay. There is a book, she said, of tapping to your core. Now, listen, I didn't see it at the time, guys. I did not see it. Because all I was trying to do is bring some type of relief to myself and to the women that was around me and that was in my life. And God allowed me to, you know, to uh, come up with tap into your core. And tap into your core, what it's all about is this. It's an inhabitation, okay, where your spirit dwells. Your core is set up for an upgrade. How many of you need an upgrade? I don't know about you, but I need an upgrade right now. I need to continue to grow. How many of you want to continue to grow? Potential, have potential and promotion. Only God can do that. That was a passage of scripture. And the word is just in my, in my soul. It's in my spirit. So every now and then you're going to hear me talk about God's word. You, you're going to hear me say, go read this and go read that. Why? Because I don't want you to believe nothing I say. Believe God's word for itself. So, there's a passage of scripture where it says, uh, promotion doesn't come from the uh, east, north, south, or west. But promotion comes from up above. So, if you want to be promoted, if you want to be upgraded, if you want to have the potential to change your life, get, you know, uh, receive greater, receive new. If you want to grow, you'll find that all in your core. You'll find it right in your core. Because how many of you know, if you don't, I'm telling you now, everything you need and everything you desire is already in you. You just have to activate it. You have to, you have to know how to activate it for it to come alive. And also, your core is not designed to uh, harbor lack or barrenness. If it's any way that we lack it, and if, if it's any way that we barren, Something's wrong. It's something that we're not doing. Okay. But tapping into your core, finding out who you are, your purpose, where you're going, your destiny. You can tap in. You can receive what God has for you. Okay. Living from our core requires us to know where our position is in Christ. We have a position, guys. I don't know about you, but I, I trust and I believe that. I have a position. I am made for purpose. I am made for a purpose. You're made for purpose. And you're made for a purpose. But it's one thing if you don't know. Come on. That's one thing if you don't know your purpose. And the plan that God has in store for you. Now, there are six principles in tapping to your core that I share. All right. And that you will learn through discovering your core. Remember, I, I spoke about discovering who you are, your core, your inner self. Some of us, we're not even who God called us to be. We're not in a place, you know, to act on what God has to or, or, or who God designed for us to be because we can't see in the spirit. We, 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 some of us, we need to understand not only uh, what God can do. Okay, because we pray, God do this, God do that, but we have to understand and know who God is within us. So the first principle that I share and tap into your core is you will reclaim your spiritual birthright. We have a spiritual birthright, guys. I mean, from the beginning of our birth, God had a plan for us. And number two, you will gain a sacred awareness of your mind, body, and your soul. That's just, I'm talking about a sacred awareness. We're talking about spiritual. And those of us who are in spiritual, we need to tap in. Okay? Three, you will discover your inner wisdom. I remember in the book of uh, Proverbs, if I'm not mistaken, or let me see. I want to get it right. Song of Solomon. Okay? All he asks for is wisdom. 
Um, I was thinking about Ecclesiastes as well. Ecclesiastes talks about uh, wisdom as well being the key principle. But Song of Solomon, Solomon himself, that's the book of Song of Solomon, but Solomon himself, all he asked for is wisdom. He didn't ask for nothing else because how many of you know, if you don't, I'm letting you know now, wisdom can get you everything that you need. Wisdom. Okay, four, you will begin to manifest the things of God and bear much fruit. Manifest the things of God and bear much fruit. Everything that we need, I'm telling you, God's got it. Psalms 24, I, I shared that the other day uh, about the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof and all that dwells in it. So nothing belongs to us. It God will allow it to manifest in your life. And you'll bear much fruit. You'll prosper. The book of Joshua talks about it. Prospering and being good health and even as our soul prosper. That's uh, also in, um, the prosperity is what I'm talking about. It's found in, uh, I believe that second John, if I'm not mistaken, I have no notes. This is all my spirit today. This is conversation with you. Basically uh, giving you some pointers on what book you would like to choose in the book giveaway. Okay. And this is how I'm led to do it. Okay. Uh, five. You will have the ability to create. Remember I talked about that in the uh, poetry book, the ability to create. A lot of times we don't have anything because we don't allow God to give us the power to create it. Okay. Also, you will, this is the sixth principle of learning how to dis, the, uh, discover your core. And that is again, your inner self. You will operate in the acceleration of your spiritual development. How many of you know we need to be developed? We're talking about growth. We need to be developed to, to in order to get the things of God. We need to get developed. Come on, somebody. And I'm glad that I'm actually uh, on different uh, areas, you know, with the recording because my phone... Uh, it's, it's, it's trying to let me know that there is like a low, a slow, uh, connection. But however, I can see myself on my, uh, page, my ministry page, shine ministry, ministry page. So I know that I'm being seen. I know that I'm being heard. Okay. But yeah, you operate in the acceleration of your spiritual development through these principles, guys. You will experience a greater level of faith and glory that Pleases God. Greater faith. Greater faith. Greater faith. And glory. Come on. That pleases God. You know what I think about. Um, and some of us may not know. Some of us do. Just follow me. How Moses went up to the mountain. And when he came down. You know. The Bible talks about. he His, his face was, was shining so bright. From the glory of God. Come on. From the glory of God. God's glory is so bright. We can't handle that. There's no way we can survive God's glory. Come on. So tapping into your core requires a solid foundation to build your future. I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm looking for a future. I'm, I'm looking for more than enough. I'm, I'm looking for something that I've never seen before. I'm, I'm, I'm looking to do things that I've never done before. Come on. And, it's, and, and, and God is the only one that can help me get there. And listen, we can't take the credit, guys, on nothing that God does. We cannot take the credit. So once you lay that foundation, as I mentioned, you must live in it and buy it. And I, and I shared yesterday, those of you who might have uh, just... Popped in in uh, yesterday's, um, it was the day before yesterday, if I'm not mistaken. But anyway, where, where I was talking about uh, worship, okay? And how I, I shared that it was a hard message for me to share because when God give you a message like that, you strive to do it yourself. You strive to, to continue on the straight and narrow. You strive to practice what you preach, so to speak. Okay? So your foundation must be your principle of life and the value you live. 
How many of us got values? How many of us got morals? How many of us got standards? We got to have that. So tap into your core. One uh, scripture that relates to uh, being able to, uh, to bear fruit and prosper will be that Psalms 1 and 3. Okay? That's again, tap into your core. So the next book, which is the fourth book I wrote, is entitled Father. Now this book, guys, I was going through an emotional battle. I'm, I, I'm being transparent with you on today because I know there's somebody out there that will be blessed um, with the words that God gives me through these books. And also just the conversation that I'm having with you right now. Nothing is staged. Nothing is uh, um, has to be you know, scripted or anything. I'm just having a conversation with you. So, Father, guys, what this uh, book is all about, okay? Let me share it with you. Again, log on, log on, log on. If you with me, if you with Shine, I want to see you. I want to hear from you, okay? And I want to uh, be a blessing to you, okay? So, what Father is about, guys, if this is your choice, okay, because already, if remember, if you're logging on with Shine, let me know who you are uh, so I could know what book you like to choose. So the first book I talked about was the poetry book, okay? Some of you who probably uh, logging on a little late, you might want to hit the replay, and you can still let me know what book you'd like to have, leaving your name uh, and everything like that uh, through my email address. Okay, and even my message here on my shine, the now factor page. And I'll ensure that I leave that same email as you see on my page, mscgrundish at gmail.com. Okay, but the first book that I talked about was the poetry book, Life Inspired Poems for the Soul. The second book was Redemption. The third book was Tap Into Your Core. Okay, and that fourth book we're on now is, is uh, Father. So, this is what Father is all about. Father will encourage those of you who want to be led. Now, if you don't want to be led, Father it ain't for you. If you don't want to be convicted, Father it ain't for you. Okay? I'm talking about being led by, by God throughout your struggles in life. We all have struggles. We all have things that, you know, that sometimes can come, overtake us. Our mind, body, our soul, our spirit, everything. It, it could be, it could really be um, hard for some of us if we don't know how to survive. Come on. So also the matter, no matter rather, if you're fatherless or just in need of a shepherd to lead you along your journey, this book will do what? It will inspire you to trust and depend on your heavenly father. Now, if you're looking for that, this is your choice. Okay, I don't know about you, but I can't make it on my own. I tried it. And I did not succeed. Not by myself. Father is also about this. Being fathered by a heavenly father will help you what? Elevate. Uh, no, evaluate. I'm sorry. Evaluate. And uh, you, you will evaluate situations and circumstances through love and intelligence and discernment. Now, if you're trying to get out of something or get over something, if God don't give you insight of that, I, I, I don't see you getting out. God is all wisdom. He's all right. He's all perfect. Come on. So in order to evaluate your situations and circumstances, you need him, his love. You need his intelligence. You need his insight, which is discernment. Number two, you identify his character in your love relationships. Now, father, for me, it was a natural and a spiritual thing. Naturally, because I grew up without a father. Okay. And sometimes in, in, in my life, in time past, I looked for love in all the wrong person and all the wrong places because I didn't have a father figure. I didn't have a man to tell me, sit down. You ain't going outside. You ain't wearing that dress. Who is that guy? All that. Come on. Real talk. I didn't have that. So that was a natural part of it. But spiritually, God spoke to me and he, and he told me, he said, I am your father. 
He said, I've been here with you from day one. I've always been here. And there's a passage of scripture where it talks about, I'm with you. I'll never forsake you. I will be with you to the end of this world. Now, if you're logging on, remember, let me know who you are so I can make sure that you get the book that you of your choosing. Okay. Right now I'm on father, which is the fourth book. Okay. And we're talking about, uh, the, the whole purpose of father and how father will bless you. I left off uh, stating, um, you'll be, you'll be able to identify his character in your love relationships. So basically if, uh, naturally speaking women, if a man can't love you like God love you, that ain't your man. If a man can't love you like God loves you, that ain't your husband. Come on. You will recognize the treatment from a man through the eyes of God. That's what Father talks about as well. If, if, if you if he always hurting you, if you you always um you know unease and you don't have no peace, he confusing your mind, that ain't God. Because God is not the author of confusion, but he's the author of peace. And sometimes, listen, sometimes you just got to weigh that thing out. Like me, like right now, I, I'm weighing things out. I got to. Sometimes I get impatient. I have in the past. And some, some days I get impatient now. But God said he'll do it all in time. That's for me and you. Come on. Four, uh, number three, surrender your independence to him by your ways becoming his ways. Guys, we need wisdom. <laughs> and listen, you and I can't do a thing without the wisdom of God. I, I, and it doesn't even matter if you're spiritual. He's all right. He all righteous and he all wise. You, you, you can't take for granted the, the wisdom of God and call it yours. Ah, uh -uh. it belongs to him. Come on, somebody. His ways being your ways. You got to take on the, uh, whatever God wants in your life. If God want it, I want it for me. If God don't want it for me, I don't want it. Come on. Also, Father talks about you dwell in his holy habitation, abiding in his word and obeying his commandments. Now, come on. That might sound religious to some of us. Talking about the commandments, talking about holy habitation, talking about abiding in his word. But listen, I'm not talking religion. I'm talking what's right. I, I'm talking from experience. Every time when I chose to go my own way, remember, not being led by God, not being guided by God, I fell into the ditch. Every time, because I was blind. I couldn't see. Come on, somebody. So I'm talking about his holy habitation. Psalms 91, it talks about um, whoever we are. If we dwell in the secret place of the most high God, come on, dwell in the secret place of the most high God. Then God can show us who we are and who we ain't. I kind of summed that up, guys. I really did. I kind of kind of paraphrased that. Okay. But just read Psalms 91. It talks about he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty God. The shadow of the almighty God. So that's what I mean by holy habitation. The shadow of the almighty God. And then abiding in his word. If God say do something, come on, I'm a witness. We, we, we got to find ourselves doing it. We just got to find ourselves doing it. And then also obeying his commandments. Whatever he tell you to do. And you know, a lot of time our problem is, it has been my problem in the past. But see, I learned better. I, I don't want to be in nobody's business. Uh-huh. I stay out of folks' business. Uh-huh. Some of us, we, 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 we are in everybody else's lane, but our own. We just got to catch it and just take it for what it is. Take it for what it's worth. Come on. Five, reflect his character and receive a great reward. 
I like that. Reflecting his character. We talk about behavior. Come on. Traits. Characteristics. You know, it's it's like if, 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 if a man impregnate a woman, that baby got to have some type of characteristics of his father. Just like us, we have to have some type of characteristics of our father. Some type. Come on. And then what we do for God, God does for us. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about the reward. And then as a result, your faith grows. We talked about faith growing already. Just adding to it. And you will develop an unshakable, unshakable connection with God. That's what Father is all about. So if this is your choice, let me know. Okay? Lastly, guys, I think I will be done here in a second. And those of you who log on later, fine. Uh, those of you who don't, fine. But those of you who are interested, I want to give away the book. A book. These books to you. Okay, so listen. Here's the last one, guys. It's called Take Another Shot. What is Take Another Shot all about? Everything that you started, God wants you to finish it. Everything that you picked up and you put it down, God say pick it back up. I don't care what it is. So from Take Another Shot, this is what Shine believes. I believe you have to Teach people more than the Holy Bible. Now, some of us that might be on here, you probably like, oh, where are you going, Shine? I really do. There's other teachings outside of God's word. Uh-huh. It sure is. Because uh, let me say, for instance, any book that, that's connected to the word of God, you can learn from it. Other people's ex, uh, experiences that relates to God's word, you can learn from it. Just like these books right here that God allowed me to write with his word as an influence, with his word as an impact, impact, you can learn from it. So the Holy Bible is the book of life, but... We can learn by the experiences of others, as I just mentioned, as well. Okay? So, reading and studying the scriptures will and can teach us how to live spiritually, but living life requires strategies on how to cope with its burdens. I don't care what you say, we all got a burden. Just real. We, we, we all got something that's on our shoulders. And that's weighing us down. We may not share it. And we might not even show it. But it's there. Okay. So when people experience life issues and survive. They can help others survive life storms. And that's what I've done. I, I went through a season of my life where. Honestly. I, I really didn't see a way out of what I was going through. I did not. I was going through that thing. And I'm like God. You see and you know. You see and you know. And the only way I'm going to survive this is by your hand. By your power. By your strength. And some of you out there can say the same. God, the only way that I can survive this trauma. The only way I can survive this uh, situation, circumstance. This battle. Is, is through your power. By your hand. Come on. So this is my life experience. And I share it here. Through... Uh, take another shot. And I pray you can learn on how to experience your greater. Because after this book, I experienced greater. I did. I experienced greater. Yes, I did. And how? Because I took the shot. I took another shot at life. I took another shot on what God said I can have. At which I thought I could not. So if this is your choice, let me know. Tap into your core. So lastly, guys, what I want to say about tapping to your core, I dedicate tapping to the core, uh, tapping to your core to the hungry and hopeful. If you hungry and you hopeful, this is your choice. If you hungry and you hopeful, remember, there is no success without fear. Some of us, we hadn't moved. We haven't shared. We haven't uh, did anything because of fear of men, fear of people. 
fear of what they're going to say, fear of what they're going to think. That's why we're not prospering. Come on. Remember, fear is fuel, guys. Fear is fuel. Your time, your chance is right now. Yes, indeed. So, to those that believe all things are possible, I dedicate take another shot to you. Okay? And read Mark 9 and 23. You'll see it in the book. If that's your choice, let me know. So, guys, as I end this live, it's 9.03. I'm going to end this live. I don't see any uh, type of comments here. I don't see anyone um, uh, that let me know that you logged in. I didn't see anyone that let me know uh, what books you desire, books you want. So I'm going to cut the live short. And all I'm going to do now is just go back through the books. Okay? Just in case if somebody uh, chimed in. Okay? And you want to know all five of the books. The t as uh, you know, based upon uh, the title. So, first one, once again, life inspired points for the soul. If this your choice, let shine know so I can make sure I send it to you. Redemption. If this your choice, let shine know so I can send it to you. Tap into your core. If this is your choice, let shine know so I can send it to you. Father. If this is your choice, let shine know. So I can send it to you. And lastly, guys, if this is your choice uh, for tap, uh, take another shot, let shine know so I can send it to you. So take another shot. Father, tap into your core. Redemption and life inspired poems for the soul. Guys, I appreciate those who support Shining Out Factor. I really do. Shine and Now Factor is going somewhere. All right? So, guys, if you start off slow, if you start off low, remember, there is a higher place. And there is a faster, accelerated pace that God is going to give you. Mm -hmm. And you're going to see yourself in a higher place uh, real soon. Okay? So, continue to shine, guys, that men may see your good works. That your heavenly father may be glorified. And I will continually to do the same. Okay. And uh, blessings and peace. Until we meet again.